Audio sample of One Flew Out of the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Casey. They're out there. Black boys in white suits up before me to commit sex acts in the hall and get it mopped up before I can reach them. They're mopping when I come out the dorm, all three of them, sulky and hating everything. The time of day, the place they're at here, the people they gotta walk around. When they hate like this, better if they don't see me. I creep along the wall, quiet as dust, in my canvas shoes. But they got special sensitive equipment that detects my fear and they all look up, all three at once. Eyes glittering out of the black faces like the hard glitter of radio tubes out of the back of an old radio. Here's the chief. The super chief fellas. Old chief broom. Here you go chief broom. Stick them up in my hand and motion to the spot they aim for me to clean today. And I go. One swats the backs of my legs with a broom handle to hurry me past. Oh, you look at him shagged. Big enough to eat apples off my head and he mine like a baby. They laugh, and then I hear them mumbling behind me, heads close together. Hum of black machinery, humming hate and death and other hospital secrets. They don't bother not talking out loud about their hate secrets when I'm nearby, because they think I'm deaf and dumb. Everybody thinks so. I'm cagey enough to fool them that much. If my being half Indian ever helped me in any way in this dirty life, it helped me being cagey, helped me all these years. I'm mopping near the ward door when a key hits it from the other side, and I know it's the big nurse by the way the lock works cleave to the key, soft and swift and familiar, she been around lock so long. She slides through the door with a gust of cold, then locks the door behind her, and I see her fingers trail across the polished stool, tip of each finger the same colour as her lips, funny orange, like the tip of a soldering iron, colour so hot or so cold. If she touches you with it, you can't tell which. She's carrying her woven wicker bag like the ones the Umbra tribe sells along the hot August highway. A bag of shape of a toolbox with a hemp handle. She's had it all the years I've been here. It's a loose weave and I can see inside it. There's no compact or lipstick or woman's stuff. She's got that bag full of a thousand parts she aims to use in her duties today. Wheels and gears, cogs polished to a hard glitter, tiny pills that gleam like porcelain. Needles, forceps, watchmakers, pliers, rolls a copper wire. She dips a nod at me as she goes past. I let the mop push me back to the wall and smile and try to foul her equipment up as much as possible but not letting her see my eyes. They can't tell so much about you if you got your eyes closed. In my dark I hear her rubber heels hit the tile and the stuff in her wicker bag clash with the jar of her walking as she passes me in the hall. She walks stiff. When I open my eyes, she's down the hall, about to turn into the glass nurse's station, where she'll spend the day sitting at a desk and looking out her window, and making notes on what goes on out in front of her in the day room during the next eight hours. Her face looks pleased and peaceful with the thought. Then, she sights those black boys. They're still down there together, mumbling to one another. They didn't hear her come on the ward. They sense she's glaring down at them now, but it's too late. They should have knew better to group up and mumble together when she was due on the ward. Their faces bob apart, confused. She goes into a crouch and advances on where they're trapped in a huddle at the end of the corridor. She knows what they've been saying, and I can see she's furious, clean out of control. She's going to tear the black bastards limb from limb, she's so furious. She's swelling up, swells to her back, splitting out the white uniform, and she's let her arm section out long enough to wrap around the three of them five, six times. She looks around her with a swivel of a huge head. Nobody up to see, just old Broom Bromden, the half-breed Indian back there, hiding behind his mop, and can't talk to call for help. So she really lets herself go, and her painted smile twists, stretches to an open snarl, and she blows up bigger and bigger, big as a tractor, so big I can smell the machinery inside the way you smell a motor pulling too big a load. I hold my breath and figure, my god, this time they're going to do it. This time they let the hate build up too high and overloaded and they're going to tear one another to pieces before they realise what they're doing.